I sledgehammer on him. You would not run out of there. Fuck. He should've thrown it at Martinez. He's hiding behind you. Jones back. Look at oh look at this health. We, no. Mm -mm. Healing. Get to the healing. To the healing. To the healing. Debuff. Reloading. Stop blocking. I wonder if it had been better if come I on, had come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Kill him. Yes, almost. Thank you. Relax. Okay. Oh, Get out of yes. there. Get out of there. Relax. Just Stay focused, okay. please. Don't Get just out. don't start ex getting excited. We have to kill her. It's ads and mortars. Yeah. Okay. When you see a meta build come out, it doesn't matter if it's a tank, healer, or DPS, it's very hard to imagine anything better than it, anything that can compete with it even. Well, what if I told you that there was a build set up that rivals the famous Striker St. Elmo's combo, which by the way is awesome, but for those who want an exhilarating experience, I have just a thing for you. So today I want to introduce you to a weapon completely different from the St. Elmo's engine, but just as effective. And don't worry, I'm still using Striker's battle gear but with a twist. So drop a like and subscribe if you're new. Now let's get into this. I completed the incursion the other night and did it with this build. I'm using the ninja bike backpack, first of all. I don't think the striker's backpack is a necessity, but I do believe the chest piece is for sure. This increases the maximum stacks you gain from 100 to 200, and the stacks give you 0.65 weapon damage, which means you get 130, and if you had the backpack, you would get 200 weapon damage if you manage to get maximum stacks using the striker's backpack. But hear me out because this is insane. I have a one piece groupo for more crit hit damage since I'm lacking by using a gear set in general. I'm also using the Fox's prayer knee pads for the weapon I have which is the highlight of this build. Overlord armaments gives you rifle damage plus the two piece offering accuracy. This with the weapon handling from strikers is absolutely amazing for the ravenous. And if you're worried about the 0.35% weapon damage you'd be losing for not having the striker's backpack, then don't. The Ravenous' explosion is based on amplified weapon damage, and when you switch shoulders, the bonus armor stacks grant amplified damage to enemy armor plates while simultaneously protecting you when face tanking. Let me go a little in depth here. The St. Elmo's engine is great, because aside from its weapon damage, it electrocutes the NPCs effectively stopping them from moving temporarily. This gives you great opportunities to apply weapon damage, get out of dangerous situations, whatever. This is game changing. But the Ravenous has its own mechanic. The explosion staggers NPCs and also stops them from moving temporarily and shooting. For the shield rushers, even if you shoot the shield, the explosion damage applies once the shoulder switches, which is invaluable. For Chungus, it's also great because their armor plates are specifically what takes that amplified damage I was referring to before. It penetrates their armor and staggers them, which then immediately takes them out. But there are a couple of complaints that people have about the Ravenous which are that it fires too slow. Well, Strikers has rate of fire and it has you covered there. And that also on a rifle, you won't gain your Striker stacks because it's a semi-automatic. In order to gain those stacks, you gotta have an automatic weapon, right? Well, <laughs> don't worry, for my secondary, I have the rock and roll named ACS-12, the automatic shotgun that I use to gain my stacks to decimate NPCs before switching to my Ravenous. It's just not fair. You're probably wondering now how this affects boss's health, right? Because we need that damage. You know about them damage phases. Well, with each shoulder switch, you can literally see the chunks of armor being deleted from the boss's health bar. That's all you. And if you want, you can roll the sledgehammer talent onto another ACS-12 to add that to your arsenal. But when you're running a DPS build, you want to focus on only that and leave the sledgehammer and other buffs up to the healer. And guess what fam, I have another version of the healer that nobody is using as well, which I'm going to upload if it's not already here on your screen. But let me know what you think of this DPS build down below. By the way, this is for those who want to absolutely destroy everything in their path in the incursion. For the veterans and speedrunners, I already made a beginner's guide, now it's time for the gloves to come off. So stay tuned for more videos like this. I'll see you in my next one. Be right out.